the thought that there is something to get out of life, that tomorrow will bring it to you, that in the course of time it will be all right. And so you go round and round and round, ever chasing the illusion that there is something outside your here and now to be attained that will make things better, because you are forever the donkey with the carrot suspended from his own halter. That was philosopher Alan Watts, and throughout this video, I'm going to keep returning to this lecture because, although completely unrelated to anime, he does a much better job at putting into words the philosophy behind Masaki Uesawa's The Tatami Galaxy and why I find it to be so special. The Tatami Galaxy is a 2010 anime by Studio Madhouse based on a novel of the same name, and although it shares its protagonist with the film The Night is Short Walk On Girl, it isn't a direct continuation of the story which follows Watashi on his quest for the rose-colored campus life, or in other words, the illusion that there is something outside his here and now that will make things better. After a less than ideal high school experience, Watashi is ready to take the college life by storm, join a circle, make 100 friends, and win the heart of the raven-haired maiden. But Watashi's still as of yet rose-colored self was cut to the quick by that which is called reality. He only managed to make one friend an ominous man with a face of ill portent, named Ozu. Realizing his failure to socialize with his fellow club members, Watashi seeks the counsel of an overpriced fortune teller to set him on the path to the rose-colored campus life. But according to her, the opportunity is dangling right in front of his eyes. Somehow through all Watashi's shortcomings, he has managed to catch the eye of one moth-fearing underclassman by the name of Akashi. But Watashi is far too caught up in his quest to pay her any mind. Rather than reflect on his own shortcomings, he places all the blame on one single decision that led him to this point. He thinks to himself, if he had only chosen another circle, surely he would have had quite a different two years. And so time rewinds right back to that moment, and allows him to choose to join a different circle. Each episode plays out in a similar fashion, with the same characters and relationships, just in different scenarios. After 4 or 5 episodes of this, it becomes abundantly clear that Watashi's problem does not lie in the decision he makes, but rather the attitude through which he experiences them. You must shoot before you think, otherwise it'll be too late. You don't aim and then shoot. It's all one action. You have to act and decide simultaneously. One of Watashi's main shortcomings, and something I can relate to strongly, is his constant need to overthink every action he takes. There is an arc in the anime that spends three entire episodes focused on one single decision. In one of the timelines, he finds himself choosing between three potential lovers. Hanuki, a mutual friend who may or may not be dating a man with an abnormally large chin, Keiko, a pen pal to whom he's built up an ideal fictionalized version of himself to, and Kaori, a Rabudoro he's been tasked with guarding by a strange acquaintance named Jogosaki. And no, you're not confused. Kaori is a used inanimate doll, but given the circumstances, is a very valid option in Watashi's eyes. <laughs> Hanuki has a rule that she only drinks with people she feels close to, so when she invites Watashi out for the evening, he knows that she must like spending time with him. No, instead he assumes she is having trouble with Big Chin and just needs some emotional support, so he turns her down to go home to Kaori. Regretting his decision, he runs out into the night without giving it a second thought, and thanks to this one moment of spontaneity, Hanuki and him have an amazing night wandering from bar to bar down the streets of Kyoto, ultimately ending up at Hanuki's apartment, where, in her drunken state, she makes some less than subtle advances on Watashi. And just as he is about to live out his rose-colored campus life with the raven-haired maiden of his dreams, he breaks down and hides in the washroom. He becomes more and more frustrated, and he finds that it's impossible to do the right thing because the right thing is always done for the wrong reason. When the wrong man uses the right means, the right means work in the wrong way. Watashi justifies his actions to himself as it being wrong to take advantage of someone in such a state. He's simply doing the right thing. But deep down, it's not Hanuki he's really worried about. His real motivation is his inability to believe a woman like Hanuki would ever be interested in someone like him. And so although ultimately making the correct decision, it was for the wrong reason and therefore does not bring him any peace. And as Watashi leaves the washroom, he is greeted by the one man he wanted to see the least. Man is in a certain sense redeemed by being something of a rascal. Because if he weren't, he would be like a stew with no salt in it. The salt somehow is something that in a large quantity is horrible, but in a certain small quantity delightful. And so everybody has to be salted 
with a certain amount of unrespectability. Otherwise, they're impossible and intolerable. One of the reasons the Tatami Galaxy stands out to me so much is just how much depth all the side characters have, despite their limited screen time. The side characters all exist solely through Watashi's eyes, and therefore we only see them as he does, without getting any insight into what they are like outside their interactions with Watashi. The character arcs begin in two ways, the first being those who Watashi places on a pedestal, like Akashi and Hanuki, who by the end of the story need to have their flaws exposed to bring them back down to earth while the second is the inverse, such as Higuchi or Jogosaki, and one of my favorite written antagonists of all time, Ozu, all of whom we are shown an incredibly biased image of, as Watashi fails to see past their flaws. Throughout the series, Ozu is constantly referred to as an alien, fish, snake, and since we are experiencing the story through Watashi's eyes, he is often drawn to match, and all we ever see of Ozu is him seemingly getting in Watashi's way, egging him on to make the wrong choices, and pulling annoying pranks on him. He is a devoted student to his master Big Chin Higuchi, but at times a double agent who is actually working for Joe Gasaki, an all-around untrustworthy snake. But it isn't until the end, when we are shown the events of the series from a new perspective, that we figure out Ozu is actually just Watashi's best friend, and has gone above and beyond to try and help Watashi to see the error in his ways. Everything he has done right from the beginning has been in the interest of their friendship, and despite Watashi constantly waxing depressed about his unfortunate circumstances, he never really inquires into what Ozu's life is like, which is why we don't learn that he is in a committed relationship with the most popular girl in school until it's almost too late. Despite the skeezy box Watashi places Ozu into, it's clear that all he is doing is having fun, encouraging Watashi, and doing everything in his power to make his raven-haired maiden happy. This might just be me, but the more Watashi comes to understand Ozu's true nature, the more human he is drawn. We are always trying to get away from ourselves as we are now, in one fashion or another. And we will only stop doing that through a series of experiments in which we try resolutely to get away from ourselves as we are. Each episode of this anime can be seen as a different experiment in which Watashi tries to escape from the unescapable. But no matter what road he goes down and what choices he makes, he always ends up alone in his 4.5 tatami room. Which compared to a 1, 2, or 3 tatami room is a truly beautiful square. But his solitude is not because he is an unlikable shut-in or an introvert who prefers to be alone. No, he just plays into his own meta-perceptions. His low self-esteem causes him to assume that people look down on him, and therefore he plays into that role he's assigned himself and doesn't even notice the group of friends he's made along the way that all love and care for him. The final arc of the show blends live-action photography seamlessly with Masaki Yuasa's art style, and ties together every single timeline we've seen so far. From this point on, I'm going deep into spoiler territory. I've already covered a lot of relationship beats and character arcs, but if you don't want the actual plot spoiled for you, then you can use the chapter markers on the timeline below to skip ahead to safety. In the penultimate episode, Watashi wakes up to find himself lost in an endless labyrinth of 4.5 tatami rooms. Every time he opens the door, climbs out the window, or even breaks down a wall, he just finds himself right back where he started. After exploring a countless number of rooms, he starts noticing small changes, and it soon becomes clear that each 4.5 tatami room is another possible timeline of Watashi's college life, often ones we've seen in previous episodes, but also countless new ones. The only constant is the Mochi Guman toy hanging from his pull chain, representing his failure to seize the opportunity that has been right in front of his eyes all along. It is not until Watashi seizes the opportunity and decides to enjoy his life for what it is that he is able to escape from the 4.5 Tatami galaxy he's built up and begin living his rose-colored campus life. When you reach a certain point of despair, you stop trying, you stop not trying, you just have arrived at the insight that your decision, your will, doesn't have any part in the thing at all. A finding that you aren't fated, that you're not trapped because there's nobody in the trap. As we solve all our problems, we make more problems. Every problem you solve gives you 10 new problems. And it's only in the moment you see when you fully understand that your situation as a human being is completely insoluble that there is no answer, and that you give up looking for the answer, that's, whew, that's nirvana. 
Thank you so much for watching. I know this video is a little different from my usual content, but this anime left a deep impression on me and I just wanted to share my thoughts with all of you. If you enjoyed this video, I make all sorts of anime content here every week from travel tips to my own drunken adventures wandering the streets of Japan.